Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where, yes, we've finally come around. Well, maybe not come around. In terms of we're finally covering the Star Wars prequels. We're what, we watch those movies. We said, Well, we've started with this one at the very least, and we'll, just, we'll see how it see goes. See how we go, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, James, we watched every Twilight movie. We're not going to stop <laughs> midway through the prequel Star Wars trilogy. That's a How great dare point. us for even <laughs> contemplating that after what we've done. Uh, leave a like if you could. And uh, I, I guess I've, I've got a, a question and a statement. I I'm guess ready. to start things right. off. First of all, it's all been said, etc., and so forth. Will you hear anything new here? I don't, I don't know. I've tried to grab some like talking points that maybe people haven't heard of before. Some classic hits as well. You know, James. Let me tell you this. Did you know that the original working title for Star Wars was Blue Harvest? Did you know that? We're not talking about Blue Harvest, Mason. Oh, I'm gonna go and watch a movie real quick then. <laughs> but look, I'll say this. I've come, and I think a lot of people have, like a long way on the prequels. Like I don't hate them as Uh much as I used to, but I'm certainly not one of those people that have come right around on them and I'm now like, oh my God, I get it now. It's it's beautiful and real and... There there has been a real resurgence, I think, in terms of the, the critical opinion of this. Now, the last time we watched this movie... Uh, we did a commentary on it. We did. But I don't think that was a fair evaluation of the movie because as we, we've done a lot of commentaries and as we've mm. learned, if you actually sit down and focus and watch the movie, you stop commenting. <laughs> yeah. So we find it's best to skim the movie a little bit. So the last time I really sat down and watched this movie properly before right now was when it came out in cinemas. Okay, yeah. And in watching it now, I, I came away with two sort of major observations about this movie uh, that I wouldn't have had then mm-hmm. and the number one thing is like it is genuinely it, it was then and it is now like a staggering achievement in terms of like technical innovation absolutely and like big budget production like obviously you know and we'll, we'll get into this but obviously you know just the idea of actors on set and their their movements are being uh you know recorded and, and rotoscoped and etc they're wearing these rigs and then they're converted into fully computer generated characters yeah they're, there's actors working against completely computer generated backgrounds and like even beyond that just just the idea and and you you often see it in the in the making of just the idea of all these artists and animators and production crew who had to put together hundreds if not thousands of background characters and alien races and droids and spaceships and pod races and weapons and props and costumes and beautiful environments. The idea of, like, we have to take the Star Wars universe and bring it back to what it was before it was this dirty, horrible universe. And just Mm. all these ideas, and they had to do hundreds of variations of all of that sort of stuff. It's like Ben-Hur. Oh, absolutely. The sheer sheer, uh, scale of the whole thing. And the idea that it came out at all is amazing. And the second note I have is... I hate this movie. (laughs) I didn't like it at the time when it came out. I was mystified by the five-star review in the newspaper because we had newspapers at the time. And I'm like, I don't like this and I don't know why really. But having rewatched it, I definitively hate it. And you're allowed to like it if you're out there. I know. Once again, I know there's been a big resurgence in this thing, and people are like, "Oh, I watched it as a kid, and I liked it, and you know, it's it's a big part of my childhood." And it's like the it's like the original trilogy for a lot of people. And and I actually think it's quite. You're allowed to have your opinion about this bad movie. You're allowed to you're allowed to like this bad movie. See, here's the thing. It's I- so we'll get into it, but oh my god, the fact that it's completely computer generated, and we're in this era where nobody has worked with that before. None of these actors have worked against nothing before. Well, that's and true, everybody's yeah. lo- And everybody's talking like they're a block of wood. Yeah, and everybody's recorded on different days. Like, yeah. a lot of the time, they'll have two takes of the same shot and then splice them together because George Lucas is obviously micromanaging a lot of this. Mm. At the same time, though... This, in terms of the prequels, this does a lot of old school stuff. Yeah. Like, there is a lot of model making mm. and there is a lot of actual set and costume design. You know what I mean? And all of these things kind of fall away in the, in the following yes, they sure do, yeah. prequels. But I think there's some, as you mentioned, like some beautiful design work and sets and, you know, there's real explosions and they visit real locations and, you know, they're modelling the palace inside and then it's like this incredibly detailed miniature on the outside and, you know, the, the starships and the starfighters and everything's so shiny and, and sleek. Yeah, and they have I to, think it's amazing. And like, they had really. to literally go, okay, what is the aesthetic of an entire planet? Yeah. Like what? Let's, well, multiple let's, planets yeah, also. Like, yeah, well, every time they did one, they had to go, okay, well, what, well, let's base this on maybe like an Earth-like culture, but now we have to do a new version of the entire the yeah. entire world, like in every every palace and every street and, and the city and what everybody wears and all that sort of stuff. And I think that's amazing. Okay, I'm going to try and turn you around on this. All, all right? right, good okay. luck. <laughs> 
<laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. A- Good luck <laughs> turning me around. Look, this is this is not new stuff. But the opening crawl, the the call to action and adventure of this movie, it's like, look out, there's taxation. <laughs> Look okay, out. Okay, let's talk about that because... Trade routes, there's a blockade. Okay, for one, I just want to get into a little bit of the background of this. Just a, just a fraction of it. Okay, so George Lucas decided to both write and direct this on his own. He hadn't directed since the first Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. He also had other people involved in all of those movies, you know, mm-hmm. less so with these ones. He actually asked Lawrence Kasdan to come back and help with the writing. Who helped write uh, Empire Strikes Back. Exactly. And he's also worked on some of the newer ones as well. He wanted to get Spielberg to direct at one point. Ron Howard was asked, but he turned it down because he's like, I don't think this is a task that I'm up for yet. Clint Howard said he was interested. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously the making of this movie itself, that behind the scenes documentary, fascinating. Mm-hmm. It's way more interesting than this movie itself. It just gives a whole lot of insight into the thought process behind this. Mm. But here's the thing, right? George Lucas has talked about how this is designed to work silently. This is designed to work outside of the dialogue. That's why it appeals so much to international audiences mm. as well, because you could just really lock in and watch this and go, this, this fight scenes, it's Pretty, that pod is pretty fast, isn't it? That is in this in a, in a similar vein to uh, the much later and and much celebrated Mad Max Fury Road, yeah. which apparently was designed to to always be in motion and you could you could understand it with the sound off. And you know what? T- tell you what, if you told me about that yesterday, I would have watched it with the sound off, <laughs> and I would have had a better experience, quite frankly. I'm, I'm I'm just stuck on the dialogue. I can't I can't. You, you, well, yeah, the dialogue was very much a second thought, mm. and in addition to that performances and and also the relationships and the charisma between the cast none of that mattered as much as it did in the original ones like they cast that core trio mm. based off their chemistry and here they just went uh you 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 and yeah you'll do you know what i mean and it shows can you do a uh, can you do a an obi-wan kenobi impression oh you can natalie portman you're in <laughs> <laughs> okay i also want to talk about you alluded to it the politics of it. I know people talk about how, you know, Star Wars is like, you know, there's too much politics in it now. And I think what people mean to say is like, there's too much politics that I don't necessarily like. Mm. Star Wars has always at its core been political. These ones, it's very much at the yeah, forefront. Yeah, what, what they meant usually was, uh, I was too young to notice the politics <laughs> in the early ones. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you look at this through the lens of like a corrupt and ineffectual governmental system, mm. I think that's fascinating. And there's some really obvious parallels which i which i'd love to talk about first of all ineffectual leaders creating international senatorial gridlock right oh yes intentional thing george lucas did right james you are turning me around on this <laughs> this is incredible and Lee it- boring <laughs> 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 and ineffectual and distant police force you know who protect those in power and people out in the outer rim and you know lower socio-economic areas are just killing each other in the dirt mm. you know what i mean and when finally one of those police officers finally goes and he meets those people and he's like wow i, I didn't realize this at the time he, he's like I'm going to take one of you. <laughs> the good one. Not your mum, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She can stay in the dirt. Yeah. Also, corporate interests ruining democracy. Also, Newt Gunray is Newt Gingrich. Like, that. that is oh. true. Lot Dodd, who's his, his, his mate, you know. Huh. You know the guys, they're doing the voices. I'm yeah, not gonna yeah. do, I'm not going to do the voice, <laughs> but, you know, they're doing the voices. He's an amalgamation of two former senators, Trent Lott and Chris Dodd. Chancellor Valorum is based on Bill Clinton. And I love this quote from George Lucas. He called Clinton a good man, but he's beleaguered. Thank like, you, that's... Wrong. <laughs> he's, sure, he's, right. he, I yeah. understand what you're going for, mm. but he's not a good man. He's awful and should be in prison. Okay, but that character was excellent on the Jizzama phone. You know? <laughs> sure. Just laying down a Jizzama phone solo. Oh my God. Yeah, so I think all of that, we've seen senatorial gridlock. We've seen what happens when corporate interests take precedent over what people actually want. This movie predicted the future. Well, I think it's just always been the way it is. Oh you my know God, what I mean? you're right. <laughs> That's how it is. Um,. There's a pod race. (laughs) There sure is. I've written this pod race is an absolute chore to watch. Again, maybe it's better in silence. Well, see, I think I've always thought that it was too long. But going back now, I appreciate it a lot more. I genuinely think that it is an amazing sequence. The sound design is amazing. Like, each ship has its own, like, particular ka chug you know, as it goes sure. past. You know what I mean? Uh, the sense of speed is really good. When a pod racer crashes to the ground, explodes. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, I'm very impressed by the, the debris. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I was. Like, a lot of that stuff is, you know, well, it's a mix. It's, it's real and it's CGI. They, they did mm. a lot of it for real. 
uh, which I think shows. Look, I think maybe I've been praising this for too long because <laughs> there's a lot of things that I don't like about this. For one, the character of Qui-Gon Jinn, right? First of all, you do the pod race. Why don't you do it? You could just stop everybody from racing with your mind. You could slam them into walls. You could do that whole thing at 20 miles per hour. You know what? As a kid... Get I... Obi-Wan to do right? it. He's like, oh, I don't fly. You do fly. We've seen <laughs> you do it. <laughs> That's right. As a kid, this, I think, was one of those movies where I, I watched it and it was unsatisfying to me narratively and I didn't know why, but over the years, I haven't learned anything about filmmaking, but I have watched a lot of Screen Rant pitch meetings and I'll tell you what... The reason this movie to me is narratively unsatisfying is because so many things happen in it because they need the movie to yeah. keep going. You know, there's a scene where Qui-Gon Jinn, as you mentioned, he's very happy to Jedi mind trick uh, Wingsy Snout, or what's that guy's name? Watto. Watto, into accepting worthless galactic credits and then potentially ruining his business. Yeah. But he draws the line at just stealing the bit he needs? Yeah, exactly. Or sell your ship and get a different ship. Or get the bus. Which they do. Like, we've seen that in the mm. prequels. They put Anakin and Padme on what is essentially a space Greyhound bus in the next movie. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't need this particular thing. Do you remember in the first Star Wars, original Star Wars, mm -hmm. they're just like, here's 10 grand, take us to this place. That's right. You know? Like, I, I do not get it. Like, the whole Tatooine sequence, and it is fascinating to see this side of Tatooine and fleshing it out more. Like, I do enjoy all that world building and <laughs> they're slaves for some reason, I guess. But it's just, like, I, I don't understand... Watto's a slave owner. <laughs> exactly. Just kill him and take Anakin and, and his mum. Yeah, I completely I know agree. They want to set, I know, but, but that's the thing. Watto needs to not be able to accept galactic credits so we can have a pod race later. And... Anakin needs to be separated from his mother so he can fall to the dark side and, and she can get killed later and he can he can be sad and mad about it. Let's talk about Anakin. Okay. Okay, I feel really bad for Jake Lloyd. I'm going to start off with that. Mm. None of this was his fault. Yeah. He has had a very difficult life as a result of this movie. He was more recently diagnosed with schizophrenia. He was horribly bullied at school. No good. And none of that is his fault. It was George Lucas's decision. And I'm not saying George Lucas is responsible for what mm. happened to him. Like, that's not what I'm saying. Bring on the bullies. <laughs> no. I've hired an assortment of bullies. <laughs> but what I mean is, like, he decided to cast him young because it's more impactful when you separate a child from his mother yeah, than, like, right. a dude who's 20. And he's like, I'm just going to go, you know? Mm. Like, it, it's different. And that's why they decided to do it. Also, and we've talked about this before, if you watch the behind the scenes, he's not the best one in the audition. Are you an angel? What? An angel. I've heard the deep space pilots talk about them. There's a documentary on YouTube called In a Galaxy Far, Far Away, I Was Almost Anakin Skywalker. Uh -huh. It's about the guy who nearly got it. Yeah, wow. And just like his life as a result of nearly being in Star Wars. Still an actor? I don't think he is, no, but he is, he's fine. So yep, that makes you know. a lot of sense, actually, yeah. yeah so yeah. he seems to be doing really well. I feel bad and I worry about the kid who's just been cast as young Luke Skywalker in Obi-Wan. I'm like, they better look after that kid. I think people have learnt yeah, from I hope this. So. I'd hope so. You James, know? have you seen the internet <laughs> ever? Yeah, but, you know, I think people are a bit more sensitive to, yeah, right, right, you right. know, child actors and bullying and the effect that these things can have on people. And we'll talk about Jar Jar in a minute. But one of the things I do like about the character of Anakin Skywalker is like any child that you'll ever meet, they're just fascinated about this one thing and they can't let it go. Like everything's just like, this is like pod racing. Did you know I'm a pod racer? I built a pod racer. I'm flying this ship into another ship. This is like pod racing. It's not like pod racing. Stop talking about pod racing. This is war, boy. <laughs> I enjoy that aspect of it. I also liked how he was like, I had a dream I came back to Tatooine and I freed all the slaves. Except you didn't. That didn't happen. Also, we know that because in Return of the Jedi, Jabba the Hutt still has slaves. Oh, that's true. Also, the Princess Leia bikini is in this movie. There's somebody standing next to him wearing it, which means that person probably got eaten by a rancor and then they hosed it off. Oh, no. How many people did it go through, you know what I mean, yeah, before right. it got to Princess Leia? Mm. So, you know, uh, do you want to talk about Jar Jar, though? Like, yeah, sure. See, look, I, I get that he's annoying, right? But go I would on. also say that if you take... Everybody who's in Star Wars, probably about 50% of them are annoying and to some degree. You know what I mean? And mm. your 50% might be different than another person's 50%, mm. right? I do think, though, when you mentioned this up top, he is an absolutely remarkable special effect, mm -hmm. including, like, the performance capture, including the way that he interacts with scenes. You never really question that he's not real. And I don't mm. think Armored Best or the team behind this 
they don't get any of the credit. Re- oh, you know, they do more so now, but, you know, it's always like, oh, Gollum, look what Gollum did. And mm. Gollum's amazing. I'm not here to say that Gollum is not amazing, Mason. I'm not here to do that. I mean, your tone suggests otherwise, but all right. <laughs> but really, he's also suffered as a result of being in these movies. Like, he's come to terms with it now, but he's a pioneer. Mm-hmm. He really is. Yeah. It's pretty annoying, though. And oh, I- <laughs> I've, I've written here... Um. All these CGI creatures are cinematic marbles, but I hate them. And I hate them to this day. And you know what I think is an element of that he's annoying to me in particular? It's that you never quite catch what he's saying. You have to think about it, and mm. that's annoying. Sure. Where, like, Yoda spoke a certain way, but you never had to be like, excuse me, what? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, he said actual words, where he was yeah. like, flippity dippity, blubbity bab. And I'm, yeah. I'm like, what, what? Maybe that's because a lot of his, his backstory is quite grim. And uh, and if he spoke like a normal man, you couldn't put that on a t-shirt. I just like <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I was banished from my underwater city because I stank. What was the deal? With I, I actually figured it out. So yeah. uh, Boss Nash banished Jar Jar for crashing his personal Hay Blibber submarine. There it is. Yeah, it's actually in the movie, but mm. I, I couldn't. Yeah, I didn't catch it. So yeah. a t-shirt with Jar Jar's face, and then it says. I was banished for vehicular manslaughter. <laughs> you know, he's been banished again for ruining the Senate as well. well absolutely. Yeah. Fair enough. Should have killed him. Um, Ewan McGregor's wig. You know the reshoots in this movie, don't you? Yeah. Because Ewan McGregor looks completely different. Uh, he's talked about that recently and also how like he was annoyed because he always knew that wig looked stupid. And then the first poster he ever saw, like, you know, out and about when he's driving around in Hollywood, yeah. like he's wearing that and he's like, oh no. Here's the thing about the character of Obi-Wan. Go on. First of all, he's hardly in it. And I'll tell you why though. He was supposed to do everything that Qui-Gon did. Qui-Gon wasn't supposed to show up until they hit Coruscant. Ah. So all the things that Qui-Gon does, I feel like all that character development, all that meeting of Anakin, the pod racing, this and that, when I first met your father, he was a great pilot or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why they didn't give it to him. Is it because Liam Neeson was more of the known actor at the time, like he'd done Schindler's List? Is Is that what happened here? Yeah, we needed a real Schindler's List vibe for this children's movie. Yeah. Look, I've got some opinions on Qui-Gon Jinn, Mason. Okay. I'm going to do it right now. At the very start of the movie, Obi-Wan says to Qui-Gon, I have a bad feeling about this. And Qui-Gon says, I don't sense anything. Wow. Great. Good work. <laughs> you didn't sense any of those battle droids <laughs> or that the, the poison gas? <laughs> nah. Should have put poison in the tea if you ask me. Close the doors. Leave him in there for for like a year. Yeah, right. Do not open that yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, Just Ever. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, let him die of old age. <laughs> Jettison that bit into space. <laughs> um, the villains. Trade Federation. Sure. How are you on battle droids? I think initially, I remember thinking at the time, oh, battle droids, that's pretty cool. And then those rolly droids come in with the force fields. I'm like, those are pretty cool. What else? Or that for, <laughs> for two hours, I guess. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. And I understand, because, you know, you, you don't want them tearing shreds off human bad guys or whatever, just uh, just beheading a bunch of human men. But uh, yeah, it, it loses its, its sparkle very quickly, doesn't it? I think so. But what one thing I do like about them is you get to see kind of the Jedi, like, move in their prime. Mm. But also, like, none of the Jedi, I think, and this speaks to also the larger narrative in the prequels, that the Jedi are no good. Mm. Like, they've clearly not been training properly because they can beat, like... They're essentially, like, broomsticks with guns, Mm, right? And they Mm. can't shoot for shit. They don't know what they're doing. They bicker amongst themselves. They trip over. But then the second that something rolls up with a shield, they're just like, oh, no. And they just, like, they run. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, they're not ready for any of this. Mm -hmm. But I like seeing Jedi just, just carve these things up. It's a stupid thing to build. And I think it's intentional. You know what I mean? To be like, this is your army? Really? Yeah. Like, this is the thing that you chose? I think the idea that the Jedi, they're, they're, they're no good. It takes two of them to kill one apprentice Sith, and one of them doesn't make it through it. They're not ready if for on, any of this. If only, if only Obi-Wan had some sort of powerful dash move <laughs> that could have gotten him through that video game style, yeah. continually switching on and off force field wall. If only there was some sort of, <laughs> if only I exhibited some sort of powerful super speed dash move earlier in the movie. No, you only get one in your life. Oh man. <laughs> well, <laughs> makes sense actually, yeah, okay. Somebody put that on Wikipedia. <laughs> That'd solve a lot of problems, I think. They should have said it in the movie. <laughs> You want to do the once in a lifetime dash, young Padawan? Sure do. <laughs> Pshow. I love all the lightsaber stuff, like Nick Gillard who choreographed this. I think seeing this balletic version of, mm. of fighting, it's really cool. And we hadn't seen anything like it. And I know at times it does look 
very choreographed. But at the time, astounding. I think I even think. now, and there's yeah. little moments where, like, the moment where they first save the queen on Naboo, like, they drop <laughs> down, uh -huh. and Qui-Gon, like, cuts through one, and then he spins his lightsaber around and, like, hooks it on his belt. And I'm like, that's fucking cool. And Obi-Wan does his jumpy double he kick. He does his jumpy oh double my kick. God. Exactly. <laughs> they should add that into the special edition of episode four. <laughs> Just have Alec Guinness do a double jumpy kick. <laughs> and even, you know, when they go up against Darth Maul, incredible villain, like, incredible mm. design, voice of Peter Serafina, which... Ray Park is obviously doing the body work. Sure, yeah. <laughs> which some would say is the most important part, you know? Mm, yeah. But the idea of having a double-bladed lightsaber, which means you can fight multiple Jedi at once. Did they spoil that in the trailer, or were yes. we all surprised? In okay. one of the trailers, yeah. Okay. I, I think that's really terrific. And, you know, that whole sequence at the end, the, the Duel of the Fates, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. terrific. And there's really cool little moments where, for example... There's a moment where Qui-Gon just lands a punch on him. Sure. And I think that's great. You know? Mm. Just like, you can do that in a fight, can't right you? Right in his nuts. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember where he hit him, but... In, in the, the face. The, well, that's where that race keeps their nuts. <laughs> that's it, so. yeah. Uh, yeah, but look, I want to get back to the, the Jedi Council. Okay. What an awful pack of nerds. Yeah, you know? I know, sure. Yeah, yeah, terrible. <laughs> and like, they bring this boy, they're like, okay, show, show us the kid. Show, just show us the kid, right? And then they're like, what's this? It's a ship. What's this? I don't, it's another thing, whatever. And they're like, oh, you're afraid, are you? Oh, you're cold, are you? It's like, yeah, I live, <laughs> I live on a sand planet. You, I, I live with my mum and you took me here. Like, I, Oh, you live with your mum, did you? <laughs> Haven't moved out, eh? <laughs> and then they're just... Mummy's boy lives with his mum, <laughs> eh? <laughs> and then they're just like, nah, kick rocks, mate. Like, yeah. you're not in. It's bizarre. Yeah. The point there is obviously they are a, they're a decaying institution despite their beautiful yeah, exactly. their beautiful Jedi chambers and et cetera. It's like, well, they, they, they've, they've gone wrong and they need this big, you know, the, they need the destruction of the Jedi to really to, to change their ways and whatever. But it's like maybe just give him a little apartment, keep yeah. an eye on him or something, you know? If you were just nice to him, yeah. he wouldn't have killed you all. And you know what? I'm glad he did. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, I'm glad. Mm. And I think it's really funny where before Qui-Gon finds out that Anakin is not to be trained, Obi-Wan's like, this is bad news. What are you doing? And Qui-Gon's like, mind your business. You've got a lot to learn. And the next scene, he's like, oh, you don't want to train this kid? Yeah, I'll train him. And Obi-Wan's like, what? And then he's like, oh, yeah, he's, he's ready for the trials, I reckon. Previous scene, he's like, you need to get it together. And as soon as he gets a new apprentice, he's like, nah, you're out. I got this new guy, I reckon. You'll be fine. We'll fudge your numbers. <laughs> fudge your numbers and try. It's fine. You don't have to do a reverse park. It's fine. We'll skip that. <laughs> I, think, I think if the council liked Qui-Gon, mm. for one, they would have let him train Anakin. Yeah. And two, they would have sent more than two Jedi to go yeah. to Naboo to deal with the war that was happening. Yeah. 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 You know? And I maybe, think they're just like, we hate this guy. Let's yeah, yeah. Can, we, can we get him killed? Do you know about... Uh, fake window in this? No, but it sounds great. So at the very end... I'm aware of the character of Mace Windu. Yes, that's right. So at the very end, they all go to Naboo for a big celebration. They hold up a, a big orb or whatever, oh, right? Yeah, nice, nice. And all the Jedi, like, file out of the ship, right? Mm. And that's cool. And there's a guy there who's dressed like Mace Windu and he has a shaved head like Mace Windu, but it's just some guy. Interesting. Like, I don't know whether they forgot to digitally replace him. They clearly couldn't get Sam mm -hmm. Jackson back. So there's just this character, and I'd love to know if, like, I probably should have looked into this, whether he's got his own Wikipedia. I mean, Gene's <laughs> guy does. <laughs> exactly. So this guy so got like, it, right? Is he? Like, there is no way, there is no way <laughs> on earth that somebody hasn't filled in the backstory of that guy. And if they haven't, they need to. Imagine Please. there being a, imagine there being any character, main or supporting, or just a, a background extra. Who, or mentioned. Who, who hasn't had their own backstory filled in by now. I agree. That'd be amazing if, if he's the only one. <laughs> just quickly, like, I feel like we neglect this every time we do one of these. Go on. The sound in this is amazing. The John Williams score is, like, it's just always excellent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ben Burt's back for the sound design, and he did a bunch of other stuff on this. And just, like, things like... The clickety clack of the droids, you know what I mean? Mm. As they're, they're strutting around. I mean, Jewel of the Fates, just, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all it's all just really terrific, right? Mm. The end battle, okay? Sure, I'm listening. And there's that famous sequence in the documentary where George Lucas is like, I think I've gone too far, etc. and so forth. <laughs> um, but what they've actually done here, and I think this is 
fascinating. It's too much, right? Mm. And there's a reason You're why. You're talking uh, the, all the Gungans and all the yeah. everybody ever, versus the droid, the droid army and well, so forth. Yeah, so it's the, it's that. It's the Gungan battle. Gungas. Mm. Uh, it's the space battle. Yep. It's the throne room arrest of Newt Gunray or whatever battle. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's Darth Maul, right? Mm. And the reason this happened, I think, is because in episode four, there was one battle at the end. It's a space battle. Mm-hmm. In episode five... There's two battles. Luke sure. is fighting Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. They're running around Cloud City. Episode six, it's three battles, whatever happens in that movie. <laughs> so they've gone, let's do four battles. Let's do four battles. And it's it's too many battles. I agree. Get rid of some of those or combine like the, the Gungans and the new Gunray thing together. Sure. Have them come to the outside of the city and they're just like, we're here for a battle. And all the droids run out and then they're like, nah, and they leave. Mm. And you don't need to do the battle. You don't need to do any of the Jar Jar running around stuff. Gungans and Gunray together at last. That's what I would have said. I've just thought of something. Go on. Gungan style. Is that anything? Has anybody ever thought of that? Yes. Without looking it up, <laughs> yes. Absolutely. No, there's a fun video. Oh, on nice. Okay, great. If you've ever seen it. I haven't seen it, but I believe you. <laughs> it's really good. Terrific. It's not what you think it is. You should look it up. It's really funny. Wow. Okay, so... Is it a porno thing? It's not a porno. I mean, okay. there would be one, but it's that's, that's, that's not the one <laughs> no. I'm talking about. Okay, so I want to talk specifically about Jewel of the Fates and recently Dave Filoni, who does, who's done a lot of work with George Lucas, uh-huh. you know, individually and on the Clone Wars animated series and all the way up to all the mm-hmm. modern day stuff. He's talked about the point of Jewel of the Fates, why it's called Jewel of the Fates. Uh-huh. Are you familiar with this uh, no. particular theory? So basically, but I love it when the chorus kicks in. Oh. Like, <laughs> that's you know, a good bit. Yeah, it's a good bit. That's a good bit. In fact, I think the whole thing's a series of good bits put together. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I know music theory. <laughs> <laughs> so that whole sequence, I feel like I'm gonna, I got I'll be too excited in this. I need to bring it down. You right? don't feel what you're feeling. <laughs> feel, okay. Yeah. So and I'm just gonna give you a stern look. <laughs> <laughs> this has just been me giving him a stern look. Well, that's these movies, isn't it? Oh, just stern looks all yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's stern looks and posh voices. And I know it's meant to be like a beautiful gilded age and, and yeah. everything was everything was fine and perfect Everything's back been then. shine. But everybody's weird and British and posh. They don't have to be. Nah. What's, what's, what's this accent, Natalie Portman? I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. I don't like you, it. You need a guy. People have said this, but you need Han Solo to just go... What, what, yeah. What's this? You don't, you, what's that? Exactly. Who are you? You don't need... You I don't, hate this. But I wonder if they just... And obviously, we're not talking about the real, the real Han Solo. He, he was too busy just being a regular Han or whatever. True. But you you do need a guy. You need a, a guy who's like, bro, you seeing this, bro? It's crazy, bro. I hate this. Right? I'm tired. God. <laughs> Stop being so posh and weird. What are you saying to me right now? Oh, but I wonder if they had put in a Han Solo-esque character, people would have been like, oh, this is okay. Yeah. It's been done, man. You yeah, know? And you got it, you gotta nail it, you, you know? And also not everybody who not everybody they get to do a Han Solo guy is gonna have Harrison Ford's exactly. charisma. Yeah. And you'd be like, God, this guy's annoying. Who would they have got? Brendan Fraser. I would have liked that a that lot. Would, I mean, for that 99, you're kidding me? They wouldn't have got him, though. They wouldn't no. have got... Just, just I don't know. <laughs> Paulie Shaw, probably. <laughs> sure. Why not? Okay, so anyway, Jewel of the Fates. That whole sequence is about the fight for Anakin's soul, oh. right? Because Obi-Wan Kenobi mm-hmm. openly hates Anakin. Mm. When he first hears about him, he's like, what have you found? Who is this? And a it, replacement for me? Yeah. The coolest part of one there is? Look at my little rat's tail. Exactly. And he's like, you know he's he's going to kill us all, right? Like, you know he's going to murder us all. Also, the kid's standing right there. Like, he's <laughs> literally right there when he's saying that. He's like, this, he's not right. You know he's not right. Why have you done this? This kid sucks. Yeah. This kid right here, this kid sucks. You know you suck. <laughs> hey, kid, you know you scum. <laughs> but with Qui-Gon losing that battle... Mm-hmm. That means that Anakin doesn't have somebody looking out for him. That's true. Obi-Wan only trains him because he has to. Sure. Because he's like, oh, all right, I'm not, oh, God. You know, he's just, he's not ready for it. He's doing it out of pure obligation. They don't like each other. We see that in the next movie. That's true. You know what I mean? They're both resentful because their father figure is an idiot and got himself stabbed, (laughs) right? right? So Uh. that adds a whole nother dimension to that battle. That battle and that result kicks everything off. Man. You know? Mm. If both of them had have died, Anakin probably wouldn't have been trained and nothing would have happened. You know what I mean? That specific outcome Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ruined everything. Man. Yeah. Anyway, are you, are you ready for uh, the Phantom Men trivia? Yes. Or is it green trivia? Did we Still decide? green trivia, yeah. <laughs> okay, we decided trivia. last week it's green trivia. <laughs> okay, terrific. Good, good. The green of a beautiful lightsaber. Yeah, exactly. I uh, mm-hmm. also just quickly want to point out, um, look, we haven't covered everything. 
No, I no, think we have. Uh, no, I'm pretty confident in saying we've covered everything. But I know some people like want to hear specific things. They want to be like, you know, everyone, he, he, he didn't have the high ground this one. He, he cut, cut up Darth Maul. Hey, you know, Yoda, he's a, he's a gross little puppy. He looks weird in this one and they CGI'd him. They fixed it. They fixed it later or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Kira Knightley's in, in the movie. Yeah, why not? Are we are we in are we in green trivia yet? No, no, or? this is just like oh, this is a precursor to like, green trivia. Hey, okay, right. Like we're not going to cover everything. Here's okay. some things. I'm confident we're going to cover everything. For example, did you know that Yoda looked like a real freaky weird puppet and they fixed it? <laughs> yeah, did you know did. that? I've heard that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's um there's some ETs in the Senate. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's fun, nice. I guess. Also, there's a Maz Kanata looking like statue in Anakin's room. Oh. I don't know what that's about. So there's a little Greedo running around. You've seen him? I did say little Greedo. It's a Rodian. It's not Greedo. There is a deleted scene with Greedo where he gets in a fist fight. And with he's little still Anakin. his little Greedo. Yeah, and then they're like, don't fight people, Greedo. You'll get shot. Nice. You know, that's literally the same. Yeah, yeah. Not that. If only he'd lived that, he would have lived in real life. I agree. But, uh, there it is. Uh, according to Jake Lloyd, there's a six hour cut of this film that was screened for several people before the film was released. And those The verdict? Saw- <laughs> Too long! No, they said mind bogglingly good. Wow, these days it would have been a six episode bloody Disney Plus show. I You're reckon. not wrong. I would love to see that, genuinely. I don't think you would. <laughs> nope, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> it's true. Oh, here's something you, you might like. Though. I'd love to see a scene in the editor's room where he's given six hours of this, <laughs> whoever it is. I don't know if it's... And he's just like, oh, what? Yeah. Shave off how much? <laughs> My God. Uh, but it'll ruin the... Na- oh, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. Here's two bits of trivia for Mason. Are we in trivia? We're in we're green still tri- in, We're still in green trivia. This is all green trivia. Okay, this is green trivia now. Okay, uh, right. Designer Trisha Bigger and her team created 1,000 costumes... <laughs> For this movie. I I bet. Makes sense, yeah. Inspired by various cultures. Yeah. Second bit of trivia. Uh, It's more of a personal opinion just for you. I think Watto's butt is filled with helium. Those wings are not supporting whatever he is. Physiologically, it's like a bee. I think he's a balloon. He's a little balloon. I man. think he's a balloon. Okay. Yeah, he's a balloon. Right. Man. So, so that's so. So it's it's a balloon in his butt that makes him float. But I guess the the wings are for, for movement. For movement. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay, sure. 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 It's like the turtle blimp. Did you ever see the turtle blimp? Oh, as a I kid? saw the turtle turtle blimp. <laughs> the turtle blimp. <laughs> Sorry, turtle blimp. I've <laughs> seen a turtle blimp or two in my time. <laughs> um, James, let me tell you this. I, had the I know you blimp. had the turtle, turtle blimp. blimp. I, I don't understand blimp. why you've never let me see it. See it. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I want it. Uh, it's in a it's in a dump. I bet <laughs> it's in a dump with bloody Darth Maul and his bloody brother. You you seem a little you seem real Darth Maul's brother jealous about me a having bit. a turtle boom. I am. Uh, Michael Jackson campaigned for the role of Jar Jar Binks. Ahmed Best has talked about like meeting him backstage wow. at a concert, and George Lucas decided against casting him because his star status would compromise the film. Absolutely, that's a very good decision. Warwick Davis, he's in this for like he's in the, he's in Jabba's he's one of Jabba's mates. Well, he's in it a few times. There's a scene where Yoda is walking. I think it's where he's coming off the ship. Mm-hmm. That's Warwick Davis in the Yoda costume. Ah. There's also a CGI Yoda later. They're testing it for the for the later movies. But also his character that's near Jabba or whatever. Mm-hmm. That character Weasel also appears in Solo. So he becomes a resistance fighter oh, later on. My goodness, that's fun. Uh, Joseph Fiennes was a finalist for the role of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Is he related to Rafe Fiennes? Yes, they might be brothers. Terrific. Uh, and one of them's in Enemy at the Gates and Shakespeare in Love. It's that guy. Nice. Yeah. Anyways, George Lucas's daughter reportedly expressed her dislike for him, which cost him the role. Ouch. <laughs> that stings, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Just a kid's like, nah. Nah, you're out. Sorry, mate. This guy's yuck. Yeah. Ouch. Anyways, the budget of this movie, it was initially supposed to be $50 million, and they were going to shoot all three back to back, starting in 1997, then 99 and 2001. It obviously blew out. This ended up costing $115 million, but it made $924 million just in 1999. That's a lot. I agree. <laughs> Especially in 1999 dollars. Yeah, but like... I think there was some disappointment. How that many it, CD singles could he have bought for that? Oh, so many. Oh, yeah, the Qui Gon. He was this, his death was spoiled in the thing. There's a thing we don't, haven't talked about. Oh, it was spoiled in the in the soundtrack. It's, yeah, that's right. Mm. Qui Gon gets stabbed. Whatever it's called. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was a little bit disappointing to some because they were thinking like Titanic numbers. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I see. The previous right. biggest movie to Titanic, I think, was still Star Wars, mm-hmm. or was definitely still up there. Okay. And so it's like, well, Star Wars will take it back. But I think initially it did very well. And then kind of word of mouth and people are like, I don't, I don't know if I like this Guy you much. saw it uh, 10 times opening weekend. I don't understand how that man is just, what, what is he doing? <laughs> I don't know. What is his, what is his brain? Let me see it. <laughs> it's not right. Peter's got to nail it. That's all I'm saying. 
Uh, but then it was re-released in 3D in 2012 and it made another $102 million. So there you go. Good for it's them. It's definitely made its money back and in merch and the like. Speaking of, I'm actually working on a video, or it's out now, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of research on the marketing campaign for this movie. Oh, interesting. Wow. Mm. <laughs> like it's... It is next level. Wow, and yeah. and and as a, as a as a piece of um a stunt video, you said you're gonna you're gonna want to earth one of those Jar Jar lollipops <laughs> and French kisses. I am I am doing something similar in, oh, for the video, no. not to spoil it. Oh my goodness. Anyways, this has been the Phantom Menace, and this is really long. Yeah, hell yeah. I don't. Oh, no, Ben, I'm sorry, Lawrence, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And we and and as as a couple of George Lucas is here, you cannot take anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, kidding, please trim it. Yeah, absolutely. We do Caravan of Garbage here every week. Obviously, we are coming back to do Attack of the Clones next week. Speaking of, if you do want to see that early, you can actually head over to bigsandwich.co. They always go up early there. There's also movie commentaries. We've done every Star Wars movie, as mm, mentioned. That's right. Uh, we've also got bonus podcasts, and our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, comes out there a day early on Sunday as now, opposed to Monday. This is podcasting, This is podcasting. James. Thank you very that's much. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Give us your opinions on this movie. And let me tell you, I haven't changed my mind. I know that. I think the, one of the first things you said was, I hate this. I did, and I still do, but I'm fascinated by the production of it. I think the, yeah. if, folks, if you haven't tracked down, do you think that are the documentaries on Disney on Plus? You, that's on YouTube. Oh, as well. terrific. Yeah. All right, track those down, and uh, you'll, you'll. You'll have a great time. You'll have a great time. Anyways, thanks, everybody. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.